Hello, my name is Mehdi. Uh, my presentation is about active attack detection and control in constant cyber physical systems under prevented actuation attack. Cyber physical systems are integration of uh, computation, networking, and physical processes. Uh, these systems are usually monitored and controlled by supervisory control and data acquisition systems. The availability of cheap communication technologies like internet has certainly improved scalability and functionality features in several applications. However, they have made cyber physical systems susceptible to cybersecurity threats. Some real world examples are the attack on Iranian uh, uranium enrichment facilities in 2010 and 2017, the attack on Ukraine uh, power grid in 2015, and uh, the attack on Maruchi Shire switch in Australia in 2001. In general, there are two classes of cyber attacks, false data injection and denial of service. In the false data injection, the attacker tries to inject false data to sensor measurements or to control, to control inputs. And in the denial of service, the attacker prevents communication between components. In this paper, we will uh, focus on denial of service. And more specifically, we will focus on a specific kind of uh, denial of service attack, which is called prevented actuation attack, or PA2. In this attack, the attacker prevents the exchange of information between the controller and the actuators. Some real world examples are uh, the battery exhaustion attack or the ransomware attack, which occurred in Austria in 2017. In, in this attack, the, the guests uh, in a hotel were locked in their rooms. And the slammer war, uh, which uh, occurred in 2003 in many power plants, in many power grids around the world. This is the general structure of the problem we have considered in this paper. Uh, regarding the plant, we assume that we can, we can model the plant as a discrete time LTI system. Here, X is the state of the system. Uh, U is the control input, Y is uh, the output vector, and omega and V are respectively process and measurement nodes. And we assume that the pair state and control input is uh, subject to this, con to this expectation constraint. Uh, please note that we can also consider chance constraint but due to page limit in this paper, we only focus on expectation constants. The PA2 attack on actuator I is equivalent to zeroing the corresponding column in matrix B. So uh, since we have P actuators, so it means that we will have two to P possible attack scenarios. So it means that we have two to P discrete time LTI systems. Here mu is the index of the mode of the system and B mu is the corresponding uh, B matrix. Let's assume that for each mu we know uh, the probability distribution. Literally, it means that if we know the probability of attacking to every actuator or any combination of the actuators. So this is the problem that we want to study in this paper. Suppose a detection horizon with length n, n is a design parameter. We want to compute the control sequence at the beginning of the detection horizon, such that at the end of the detection horizon, we can identify the actual mode of the system with a high probability of correctness. While during the detection, uh, detection horizon, the control uh, performance and the constants are satisfied. This is an active method uh, because it interacts uh, with the system during the detection horizon by means of a suitably designed input signal. And before continuing, I'd like to mention that since we determine the control sequence at the beginning of the detection horizon, it means that we can easily compute the expected value and the covariance of the state and output over the detection horizon. Let's start with the control unit. Uh, we consider this control objective function in this paper. So the first time penalizes the tracking error and the second time penalizes control effort. As I mentioned, we will determine the control action at the beginning of the detection horizon. So it means that we are utilizing uh, an open loop approach. So it's been shown in theorem one of the paper that by using an open loop approach, we can express this cost function uh, as an uh, explicit, as a quadratic uh, function in control sequence. 
Regarding the detection unit, you can use this multi-model adaptive estimator. It, uh, it includes a, a bank of uh, Kalman filters, and then based on the residual of the Kalman filters, uh, it computes the posterior uh, probabilities, and then based on the posterior prob probabilities, it determines the actual mode of the system. Now, let's assume that we have only two modes. So we start from an initial condition, and as system evolves, we update the posterior calculations, posterior probabilities, and at the end of the detection horizon, we, uh, we can uh, determine the actual mode of the system. Now assume that the attack occurs uh, in the middle of the detection horizon. Since we will have another detection horizon after the first detection horizon, uh, probably we won't be able to detect attack at the end of the first detection horizon, but we will be able to, uh, to identify uh, the actual mode of the system, or we will be able to detect the attack at the end of the second detection horizon. Now assume that we have a very smart uh, attacker and the attacker starts the attack in the middle of the first detection horizon but it stops the attack in the middle of the second detection horizon so in this case probably we won't be able to identify the actual mode of the system or we won't be able to detect the attack what we proposed in this paper is to use this parallel structure so instead of having only one detector we will have a uh, N detectors in parallel, we will have N detectors in parallel. So the main advantage of this method is that at every time instant, we will have a detection uh, signal. And it's been shown in the paper that by, by doing this, it's impossible for the attacker to remain still. And regarding the detection objective function, we consider this detection objective function. Uh, here, sigma uh, is a binary binary function. Uh, it's equal to zero when the identified mode is equal to the actual mode and is equal to one when the identified mode is not the actual mode of the system. Again, it's been shown in theorem two of the paper that this detection objective function can be upper bounded by an explicit function in control sequence. Here, phi ij is a function of the expected value of the output over the detection horizon and also the covariance. And it's been shown before that by knowing the control sequence at the beginning of the detection horizon, we can easily compute this expected value and also uh, the covariance of the uh, measurements over the detection horizon. This phi ij is a quadratic function in uh, control sequence, but this upper bound is in general non-convex. We will simulate uh, our method on irrigation channels, and more specifically, we will consider irrigation channels with overshot gates. Uh, the, the, the model, or, or let's say the, the height of the water in pool, uh, in pool G, uh, has this dynamical behavior. In order to carry out this simulation, we will use the real data of pools 9 and 10 of Houghton main channel in Texas. We will simulate three possible formulations. In the blue one, we only consider the control cost function and we want to determine the control sequence such that it minimizes this control cost function uh, such that the constraints, the, the expected uh, expectation constraint is satisfied during the detection horizon. In the green one, we want to minimize the detection objective function such that the constraint is satisfied and also the control cost function has a value less than a certain threshold. And in the red one, we focus on the control cost function and we want to minimize the control cost function such that the constraints are satisfied uh, over the detection horizon and the detection objective function uh, takes, a, uh, takes a value less than a certain threshold. The first graph is uh, the obtained control, obtained normalized control uh, cost function. As expected, the blue one has the lowest cost and the green one has the highest, highest cost because the green one uh, prioritize the detection objectives and in the blue one we only consider the, co the control cost function and the second graph shows the obtained detection cost functions again as expected the blue one has the highest cost because it doesn't consider the detection objectives and the green one has the lowest part, lowest cost because it it minimizes the uh, detection objectives so 
In this presentation, we have seen an attack detection scheme for prevented actuation attacks. Uh, we have seen that it, it has two components, uh, control unit and detection unit. We saw the details of the control unit and we saw the details of the detection unit. And also we, we saw some simulation results on irrigation channels with overshot gates. Here are the, some papers for more details about this specific type of attack or more details about the control unit and the detection unit. Thank you very much. I'm ready to take some questions.